Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 30 in the book of Revelation. We're going to actually take a slight detour into John chapter 4, 23, and I'm going to title today, True Worship in Three Easy Steps, which is kind of a joke, but you'll see what I mean by that. We're going to talk about the tragedy of either worshiplessness or the tragedy of worshiping wrongly. Um, so I want you to think with me today about true worship and its characteristics. I get this from John chapter 4, um, verse 23. The hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. And not only is he seeking people, he's also seeking some other creatures. We'll talk about that in a minute. So think with me about true worship and its characteristic. So here's what true worship is, or at least these are three characteristics that I thought of today. Number one, it's 100% accurate. That is, you have the right object of worship. Plus, it's 100% correct in the assessment of God's characteristics, or at least enough of God's characteristics that you sort of get your arms around it. Plus, it's 100% agreement of my will. You add up accuracy and assessment and agreement, and you end up with worship. So if you start with the right God, and you have the right characteristics and the right response, you're on the, the way to worship. So if you want all those R's, it's the right regent, it's the right revelation, and it's the right response. So today's title, the worship in those three easy steps. Make it a little commercial there if you want. All right, so God desires worship in the sense that not to do so would be remiss in three ways. It would be inappropriate, ignorant, and obstinate. And he deserves right worship, and we are right to participate in it. So get any of those things, those three things wrong. It's either inaccurate or unworthy of him and will cause it to miss worship. So let's break this down. Accuracy, assessment, and agreement. Let's get the right of God, right God. That's the accuracy. Let's get the right assessment of that God. That's the, that's the characteristics. And then let's get our agreement correct. So to get accuracy wrong would be to misworship or to idolatry, to commit di idolatry. Uh, I call that being head gone. You know, you you didn't you didn't even get the right object of worship. That's inappropriate. Secondly, if you get the assessment wrong, that's heresy. So you get your head wrong. You, you didn't get your understanding around it. That's ignorance. And thirdly, if you get the agreement wrong, that's obstinance. That's willfulness against God. That's headstrongness against God. So to get the accuracy wrong is idolatry. It's to actually kind of miss the object of worship. So there's something else on the throne. Maybe that's me. Maybe that's my pride. Maybe it's money, reputation, success, accomplishment, pleasure, beauty. All kinds of things can be, and a lot of those things are good things, by the way, but taken to the wrong extreme, they are idolatrous. It's, oops, I got the wrong object on the throat. That is inappropriate. So the second thing you can get wrong <clears throat> is your assessment of God. You're worshiping a God of your own creation. You're worshiping either the wrong attributes of God or, or parts of the wrong, you know, you put things into who God is that, that either might not actually bear. You've messed up on the attributing characteristics to him that he doesn't have or not attributing characteristics that he does have. So God has gone to great trouble to reveal himself in creation and history and incarnation and transmission of his word and now in the church. And not availing yourself of this revealed re revelation is just uh, ignorant. And then the third thing, to get agreement with God, and this is probably the thing that most people struggle with, is this willfulness and obstinance. So it's, I don't want to participate in the rightful worship of a deserving God. Even if I have the right God and enough of the right understanding of, of him, I understand he exists. Um, I have the right understanding of him, at least enough to be accountable. So he desires our assent, our acquiescence, our approval, and our amen, basically. And to, to not agree is this stiff-neckedness, refusing, declining him, and opposing him this way. Um, I've noticed it's a person that notices that, that there is a God and things about God, and yet they reject it. So this person is obstinate. All right. So in general, we are supposed to worship, and not to do so misses the mark. Uh, 
So worship does not equal singing necessarily. People can hide behind singing. It does not necessarily uh, uh, equal music. So music may please or displease him. Um, it's not a particular church service. A church service can go on with no worship present uh, whatsoever. So what is worship? It's this appropriate posture of the heart and soul and doing behaviors towards God that acknowledge his existence and his presence and in the way that he wants to be known. And it, it entails our attitudes, our actu actions, and accuracy. Remember, it's a privilege that only a fraction of creation gets. Do rocks and waters and grasshoppers worship? Or do they have the will of heart and scope and understanding? Uh, not at least by the definition that I'm giving today. Are we alone in worship? Well, no. Angels worship, myriads of them, lots of them. Elders, um, perhaps those are people that are on the 24 thrones in this throne room, or they might be angels, or they could be a third category of some sort of heavenly elder. Then there's these ranks of heavenly beings, cherubim and seraphim. We haven't heard about those yet in Revelation, but we will. Then there's the four creatures. And then we're not alone because we have people around us that are worship. But he is alone in being the object of worship. Okay, so in conclusion, to get the accuracy wrong about God is to misworship. That's to idolatize, idolatry, to commit idolatry. And that's inappropriate. And then to get the assessment of God wrong, well, that's heresy. And that's ignorant. And we can solve that by you know, going to church and reading his word and finding out the revealed God. And then finally, the big one is to get the agreement right about this. So getting that wrong is obstinate and willful violation and saying no. So let's not do that either. So let's get the three things right. In three easy steps today. Let's get our accuracy about worship and our assessment about worship and our agreement about worship. And that is true worship in three easy steps. Thanks for listening.